Welcome to the 12th Unity for J online vigil for WikiLeaks publisher Julian Assange. I'm Joe Loria, editor in chief of Consortium News. Julian Assange is a wanted man because he published classified information that revealed the crimes and corruption of government officials around the world, not just in the United States. But it is the US, the supposed beacon of freedom and democracy and press freedom around the world that has indicted him and wants him extradited to the US for the crime of publishing. That's why Julian Assange has been a refugee in the Ecuadorian embassy in London for the past six years. He knows the second he steps back onto British territory, he'll be arrested and sent to the US where he's unlikely to receive a fair trial and would be likely spending the rest of his life in prison. As we do every week, uh, and we're now holding these on Fridays, every Friday and in the new time, 4 p.m. Eastern time to 7 p.m. Eastern time in the United States East Coast. I'm actually in daylight for the first time. So I'm going to read the headlines that uh, of the last week about the situation of Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. At the top is uh, Marie McGuire, a former uh, Nobel Peace Laureate. She nominated Julian Assange last Monday for the 2019 Nobel Peace Prize. And I would like to read her statement because I think it's quite, quite a good one. Why she nominated Julian Assange for the Nobel Peace Prize, a, a great development for those defenders of WikiLeaks. She writes, Julian Assange and his colleagues in WikiLeaks have shown on numerous occasions that they are one of the last outlets of true democracy. Their work for true peace by making public our government's actions at home and abroad has enlightened us to atrocities carried out in the name of so-called democracy around the world. This included footage of inhumanity carried out by NATO and the military, the release of email correspondence revealing the plotting of regime change in Middle Eastern countries, and the parts our elected officials played in deceiving the public. This is a huge step in our work for disarmament and nonviolence worldwide. Julian Assange, fearing deportation to the U.S. to stand trial for treason, sought out asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy in 2012. In recent months, the U.S. has increased pressure on the Ecuadorian government to take away his last liberties. He's now prevented from having visitors, although that's been slightly relaxed in the last few weeks receiving telephone calls or other electronic communications, thereby removing his basic human rights. This has put a great strain on Julian's mental and physical health. It is our duty as citizens to protect Julian's human rights and freedom of speech as he has fought for ours on a global stage. It is my great fear that Julian, who is an innocent man, will be deported to the U.S. where he will face unjustified imprisonment. We've seen this happen to Chelsea Manning, who allegedly supplied WikiLeaks with sensitive information from NATO and U.S. Middle Eastern on NATO and U.S. Middle Eastern wars, and subsequently spent a number of years in solitary confinement in an American prison. If the U.S. succeeds in their plan to extradite Julian Assange to the U.S. to face a grand jury, this will silence journalists and whistleblowers around the world in fear of dire repercussions. Julian Assange meets all criteria for the Nobel Peace Prize. Through his release of hidden information to the public, we are no longer naive to the atrocities of war. We are no longer oblivious to the connections between big business, the acquisition of resources, and the spoils of war. As his human rights and freedom are in jeopardy, the Nobel Peace Prize would afford Julian much greater protection from government forces. Over the years, there have been controversies over the Nobel Peace Prize, and some of those to whom it has been awarded Sadly, I believe it has moved from its original intentions and meaning. It was Alfred Nobel's will that the prize would support and protect individuals at threat from government forces in their fight for nonviolence and peace by bringing aware awareness to their precarious situations. Through awarding Julian Assange the Nobel Peace Prize, he and others like him will receive the protection they truly deserve. It is my hope that by this we can rediscover the true definition of the Nobel Peace Prize. I also call on all people to bring awareness to Julian's situation and support him in his struggle for basic human rights, freedom of speech, and peace. Merid Maguire. 
Also in the headlines, former Australian ambassador Tony Kevin reiterated his support for Julian Assange. She tweeted, I have always called for Assange's release and his safely and his safely escorted return home to Australia in an RAAF aircraft. This innocent man is being treated so badly by Ecuador, UK and US governments. We hope to have Ambassador Kevin to join us later in the program. He's been invited. Uh, as I pointed out in reading uh, Mirrod McGuire's comment that uh, uh, Julian has had a short window now of visitors being allowed. We know that Julian, sorry, that uh, John Pilger visited Julian twice in the last few weeks. We've had uh, a theater director, Angela Richter, meet him, and Cassandra Fairbanks, who's been a guest on these vigils, visited Julian Assange last Monday. She reports that uh, his, quote, his living conditions are more akin to a dissident in Stasi-era Germany than an award-winning publisher with asylum. And Fairbanks describes the numerous cameras that are displayed throughout the corridors and in the room where she met Julian Assange as well, and that's why she feels she's in a Stasi era, era embassy. On Wednesday, WikiLeaks issued official denial of Trump election contacts, saying that the organization never provided election information to Donald Trump campaign advisor Roger Stone or to Jer Jerome Corsi, a conservative author and conspiracy advocate. That's a quote from WikiLeaks, a firm denial of any connection with those campaign, uh, those men linked to the Trump campaign. Uh, Yanis Varoufakis, the former finance minister of Greece, his organization, DIEM25, <coughs> excuse me, on January 4th launched a petition calling on governments of Ecuador and the UK to prevent the extradition of Julian Assange to the US. It has more than 8,000 signatures. As I mentioned, theater director Angela Richter also visited uh, Julian, and she writes, when I asked him how he had endured the isolation for so long, he replies that he was almost delighted at first. He was sure that such a flagrant violation of his human rights would cause great public outrage and European politicians would stand up for him because of pressure from the media. Nothing of the sort happened, however, and as the months passed, he lost faith. This is why we have these vigils, and we're going to certainly discuss why there hasn't been that public outrage. As we mentioned last week, um, Ecuador has begun a special examination of Julian Assange's asylum and citizenship as it looks for an IMF bailout. This uh, is a big development, uh, and we did talk a little bit about it last week, but it's worth mentioning again, because as some suspected, uh, Ecuador holding a very important asset for the United States, namely Julian Assange, would certainly want something in return for handing him over, as all governments deal in that way. It appears if this story is accurate that the what one thing they would want is a uh, an IMF deal that would allow them a new loan and to pay off apparently $2 billion that they owe, owe to China, amongst other debts I'm sure that Ecuador has. But what's curious about uh, this story, or actually a reaction to this story, is, a, is an article I saw in Daily Beast, which looks like disinformation. Daily Beast is notoriously unreliable and an anti-WikiLeaks publication. They make a big deal of going after Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. And it is, it is an article from Quito, uh, the capital of Ecuador, in which a member of parliament there was interviewed and other people were interviewed, uh, in which this article pretends, put, pretends to say that uh, they don't really care about Julian Assange very much. It's not a big deal like some uh, websites and this vigil in particular makes out of what's going on that uh, they don't really care and it's all really nonsense. So uh, you might want to look at that article if you want a good laugh. Uh, there's been no more news on Rudy Giuliani, which is basically bad news. Uh, Giuliani, as we all know, on just before New Year's Eve, had uh, made a statement on Fox News in which he compared WikiLeaks publications to the Pentagon Papers. And he said that uh, when that happened, no reporter or no editor from the Washington Post or the New York Times had been arrested and therefore, and gone to jail, and therefore Julian Assange shouldn't be arrested and go to jail because he's doing the same thing that the Times and the Post did with the papers and that what uh, mainstream media has done ever since, which is to publish classified information without consequence. So it was a very significant statement from Rudy Giuliani, the former New York mayor, of course, and federal prosecutor, and now an, an advisor and lawyer for President Donald Trump, 
why we thought it was significant is because he's an advisor to President Donald Trump who has the means to issue a pardon even before uh, an arrest is made. There are, there are charges, as we know, in this Alexandria, Virginia courthouse down the street from me here. And uh, so he's been charged, and Trump can pardon him if he has the guts to do that. Of course, it'll be attacked as being a partisan move, that, and that would supposedly appear to be more evidence that Trump was delivered the presidency by one Julian Assange in WikiLeaks, which, of course, anyone who understands uh, anything about the 2016 election knows that that's just not true, that Julian Assange did not give Donald Trump the White House. Hillary Clinton gave Donald Trump the White House. She was an awful candidate. She made numerous mistakes, not, not campaigning in Wisconsin and other working class states and uh, calling Trump supporters, working class people deplorable, and a numerous other, and the fact that she made those speeches to Goldman Sachs and other big banks on Wall Street in which she clearly is siding with them against the people and with the elites. And if she had not done that, and, and if her campaign had not tr tried to sabotage Bernie Sanders, as all the leaks of all the emails published by WikiLeaks show, if she had been a model candidate, we would have read nothing as Scott Horton on this show a couple of weeks ago pointed out, if she'd been a great Secretary of State, no one would have been interested in those emails. They would have been boring. But of course, it was revealed in those emails just how corrupt Hillary Clinton is. And to blame the messenger of WikiLeaks in this case is just bad form, frankly, because she lost because of her own bad campaigning. And she's not the politician, certainly, that her husband was. So uh, to blame Julian Assange is just out of line. And that, but of course, if Giuliani is of course being blamed, if he is at all, because there's been no news on that. <clears throat> Nobody in the main, in the U.S. media at all has published anything on his statements. It was on Fox News, but Fox News television, but Fox News website never even ran a story uh, about his remarks about Julian Assange either. So they will be dismissed, and Trump would be dismissed as a partisan act to help the guy who gave him the White House. And I think that way he. Trump should have the guts to weather that and do the right thing and pardon Julian Assange, simply because, as Giuliani pointed out, he's a publisher and does the same thing that mainstream media does by publishing classified information. 